Hello, everyone, and welcome. I meant to say, hello, everyone, and that's for Coop, who misses me doing that. So take that, Joe. <laughs> the rest of ya. We are doing another live stream test here at twitch.tv forward slash GM's Cut, because after some <clears throat> embarrassing technical difficulties, uh, streaming for our sponsor over at Dark Galaxies Gaming, obviously we need to brush up on our game. So we are in the middle of book two in the Star Wars, not FFG, but the Star Wars Saga edition, the Dawn of Defiance campaign, which happens three months after Order 66. They are doing the wet work, the mercenary work for Bail Organa. Book one, a ratty old space station, saving somebody frozen in carbonite, getting shipped to Alderaan, meeting a whole bunch of security force that are all talking about a 20 year retirement plan and they can't wait to cash in 20 <laughs> years from do the math, folks. Three months after Order 66. It is 19 years before Han shot Guido. And that's why we call the show We Shot First. Yeah, it was a friend that came up with that, not me. But we liked it. So here we are. We are a podcast on the Rollmongers Actual Play Network. If you want to get caught up on all of our audio, and if you want to see some video, you can go to our Patreon page and become a patron at Patreon dot com forward slash role mongers right now we're putting this up through dicewise entertainment and they we i produce this show and we really need some help we really need some test footage we really need to do some streaming and you get to see us so these poor buggers that are used to hiding off camera or just looking at each other now have to put on their proper faces pull up some artwork of their characters and play live there's a lot of difference between recording audio, editing the crap out of it, and going live stream, which we are doing now, and recording. You can catch us on our YouTube later. So to get you caught up on the story, what are we looking at here, gentlemen? If you're looking at this in the video aspect, you're looking at a Gatrock Industry Class 720 freighter, a big sea turtle looking ship, which we absolutely adore. At the beginning of season two, which is like episode 36, 37. I put these guys through hell and back underwater and a special Christmas episode just for Poser, where he was visited by three ghosts of Christmas and friends past, just to get their hands on this ship. And in the second book, A Wretched Hive, because they successfully did Trader's Gambit, it's done. Don't ask us to go back in video. Just listen to the audio. You'll be fine. We're halfway through Wretched Hive. They had freed and one Admiral Varth, Gilder Varth? Does that name sound familiar to you, Frank? No. Mm. You know how long it took no. me to realize you stole that name? <laughs> like, we shot like an entire season zero of Dice Before Dishonor, and we have all these cavaliers and one samurai going through Pathfinder's first edition version of War for the Crown. And Matt's like, yeah, Varth, it's so great. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Gilder Varth? It's, it's, it could be a lord's name. And he's like, you don't, doesn't sound familiar? Nope. Then we go back to Star Wars. And this old fuddy-duddy that they bust out of a imperial prison on Felucia, the wild Alice in Wonderland jungle planet, defects sort of to the, once again, <clears throat> proud Nathan Fillion. I mean, proud Eldorian uh, resurgence ship, a nebula, nebula B frigate, flown around by Captain, well, we're going to call him Nathan Fillion because that's what the character profile looked like. And he whispered about the Sarlacc project. The Empire is taking an interest in the huts and some particular they're setting up something big they're calling it the sarlacc project and of course being expendable i mean being payable being not directly associated with bail organa who still again three months after order 66 is right there in the senate trying to make things happen legally and nicely paying these guys under the table to go check it out they have flown to aquarius to get a ship because they saw it on uh, the hollow net then they finally flew to a i want to say nemoidian colony planet do you guys remember the name of it cato nemoidia cato nemoidia is it it's because it's in the name a misty chinese moss rounded cap mountain of a planet with giant steel city-sized hammocks that suspend cities from one of these mountains to another now we have a clone war crash the crap and rubble this lego of a city and this broken down post-war city of zara stands in shambles and is the perfect breeding ground i mean hiding ground i mean takeover grounds for a downtrodden nemodian community 
owned and practically enslaved by a hut lord called Darga. They have tried to ingratiate themselves to him. They have done droid VR races with him. They have saved him from being poisoned once. And now, how does he thank them? Well, they possibly believe that in the middle of the night, several Quarren assassins and someone else have snuck aboard their ship, the Aquarius, to kill them. Last episode, A Shot in the Dark, season two, episode 28, I believe. Frank Hamilton playing Old Man Zinn, a broken down post-war militia sniper from some world we can't pronounce, close to unknown regions, his own personal generically thrown together near human. Saves the life, or was it our cyborg pilot that you guys dug out of hypersleep in a secret panel that came with the ship that we instantly trust, because that's what you do in Star Wars. You just tr trust people that are called <laughs> players. <laughs> Sleeping in the same bunk. Now, there's like three bunk rooms, but together these men just want to like, I don't know. They don't trust each other? Maybe. Anyway. Assassin, Corrin. Cthulhu's his way in. Zoiberg's around. Takes a shot at Zinn. And the old man eats the shot and combat ensues. And all of a sudden, all the lights on the ship blare on and then phase and blow out. As if the ship itself wants to wake everybody up. Meanwhile, over in the medical bay, which is actually one of the two huge cargo bays where the whole floor drops down to ground level, we have our own Dr. Leth, played by Jay Tamlin, who's in Japan right now, and his internet and illness is uh, getting the better of him, so we won't see him for another episode or so. Um, due to a gladiator arena fight, just for funsies, Darga put his best guys up against our best guys and our huge near-human Fortress 2 heavy-looking jet jetpack-wearing Mandalorian the television series coming. Merrick the Mercenary <laughs> <laughs> jumps off of his table. I mean, the heart meter's still beeping at him. Uh, Zinn, who we had tangled up in a net and the way he sleeps upside down like a vampire, drops to the ground, and a second corn assassin made his way to that room and mixed it up with them. Their solution? while well, they're scrambling for guns and playing slap happy in the dark when all the lights came on, but right? Merrick jumps off his own medical table and not just pulls it for cover. No, no, this guy starts burning force points, destiny points to pick the table up and throw it at the assassin, ending that combat quite quickly. But gentlemen, we're not done. Part, part of the party's missing. Our leader, Rahal Obris, a sleazy former separatist noble, but well-paying. But well-paying, because he pays Merrick to protect his butt. But where are you now? They're separated. They're, they're back at Darga's Palace with Poser Sham, if that is his real name, a rocker of a conehead Syrian Jedi undercover. Not even his own real party knows that he's been melting brains and, and taking names through combats. Modified a vibro axe into an actual crummy instrument. We don't know if he's any good because he just rocks it so hard with good riffs. And they're so, they, you know, so, do you guys notice Poser only plays during combat when you guys are too yep. busy to notice if he's any good at actually being a musician? Bro, well, we've seen him play on stage before. Brilliant. We Brilliant. Yeah, I, I yep. played on stage. I also played during the uh, during the droid race. Please don't yep. race. <laughs> please don't interrupt no. my, my monologue and correct me. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving, sorry, moving on. Um, no, you, that's true. That's true. He, he has proven his chops. Not to mention, I'm pulling some awesome music from Evan King, from Kevin McLeod, from Roy Bugden, from all Jeff the Knight. De, 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 all the freebie guys <laughs> that we love to support. Tim R from Tabletop Audio to to make an actual soundtrack. So it's not just a raw amateur podcast vodcast. You actually get some decent tunage going. So on that note, left in Dargus Palace, these two are contacted in the middle of the night by a servant of Darga, who claims you must come this way. After Darga's own, I wouldn't say maitre d' or, or maitre domo, because that's Ignan Voss, one of the Nemodians, but his translating droid, uh, a rattling, falling apart uh, protocol droid, pulls out his vocabulator, the sort of lit up harmonica mouthpiece, and puts in an, yet another one. He has three, but don't get me into it. And smoothly asks him that he's working for a former droid crime lord that they met on that broken down station in the first book that goes by the name of Switch. Gives them an encrypted message and hopes that they can decrypt it in exchange for some information that will now flow 
through a guy who's right under Darga's nose. So they are making progress. They're making contacts. They're pissing people off. They're taking names. They're kind of impressing Darga. So why this meeting in the middle of the night? Why are there assassins on their ship? We got halfway through a fight, and those guys might be being led into an ambush. So what a great time here in the Star Wars universe with who knows what movie's coming out next to piss people off or embrace the joy. Because personally, I don't think there's any bad Star Wars. It's Star Wars. Suck it up. I agree. It's awesome. Everyone has their personal taste in Star Wars. I get it. But come on, guys. Star Wars. You know, I feel some love. We are playing an older system, what they call a dead system. Saga, 15 books. We're playing it because of the story. We love the Star Wars story. And that's why we're running Dawn of Defiance instead of competing. I don't mind the up. system. Yeah, it goes with Even though it's horribly broken. I don't mind it. <laughs> I don't mind. Kept you alive. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind it either. Yeah, kept you alive. Kept you alive. So we yeah, go now. Says the force user. <laughs> we go now into round three, which makes me actually change the map here, as you can see. And I'm switching over to what looks like an enclosed space with trees and a field. Um, thanks to DiceWise ex executive producer Cheryl Ball, who actually used her uh, purchase program Dungeon Genie to colorize a black and white map and sort of met it up, set it up for these guys to run around and have their <clears throat> encounter. It's an encounter, possibly harmless. So putting you guys right here at the front door. That's strange. You're not appearing at the front door. Nope. Hmm. Usually. Did you check the back door? <laughs> Not getting into that. <laughs> Not getting into that. Not getting into that. Oh, you know what? I'm wondering. Nope, that's on the map layer. Okay. Object. Poser Sham comes out. There he is. Can you see the map hey. now? Is it lit for you? Oh, it's uh, lit for it, me. It was already lit. Okay, good. But... So. This is mid-combat as far as time is concerned. For you guys, you've just sort of entered into a moment in time where all this is going on on your ship, and nobody has called you on the comms as far as you know. They're probably screaming into them, but maybe you guys are being jammed. Don't you hate it when they give you the raspberry? <laughs> Excellent. Thank, thank you. That's a you know, dad reference. Okay. So getting back to the scene at hand, I'm going to pull up the adventure shadows flicker across the floor of an aviary as the swaying trees within a block radius a small block radius area actually filter out most of the moonlight shining down through an arched crystalline windowed ceiling the occasional flutter of wings or gust of air can be heard faintly as a bird takes flight or lands on a nearby branch. A soft rustle of leaves provides a thin background noise, making the sounds of your footsteps as you pass down the dimly lit winding path, flanked on either side by trunks of large trees. The servant leads you to the door and explains, no, he wants to meet you privately. I can't go in, but I will be here. And he lets you in and closes the door behind you. The intro up assumes that you guys are like moving in, but these are your surroundings. Can I have perception checks, gentlemen? Sweetly. Oh, fine. 14. 18. That's odd. That's even. <laughs> no, I was had, had audacity was up and running, and I'm like, oh, trying to close, and it just pops up on the screen. It's like, whoopsie. Like you said, much to learn about the actual live aspect of video and streaming, but we hope you bear with us and are at least moderately entertained. 14 and 18. 14 perception poser. Would you like to burn a force point to get to that nice static 15 of things go well for a character or? You're a banther, Jack, so no. <laughs> no? I'm not using any more force points. You know, speaking of force points, you guys get like um, five plus half your level every time you level. So you guys would be starting yep. with like six right now. Yep. What are you currently at? Because we've been burning through them. I've been 
asking politely if you want to modify your roles as we've been going along through the second season. What are you currently at? How many get left? Well, you gave us fourth level very recently, so I'm still at six. Okay, can you come in a bit? I'm getting a lot of echo from you. Uh, yeah, sure. I uh, so since we just leveled up or leveled up fairly recently, I am at six force points. Okay, and I am in the same boat. So you guys leveled, and we got you to fourth. Yep. So five and a half level. You guys should actually have seven. Seven. Yes, yeah. you're right. Okay, and it, but there's been no mooching and gooching from no. me. You guys have not got your no. Okay. No, I haven't spent any, right. um, but I haven't been in a position to really. I haven't needed to. I've, I've just been standing back watching everybody do all the dirty work, which is fairly appropriate. So either I did my math wrong, which is very odd due to my degree. I, I thought, or <laughs> I've already spent one. I think I'm you spent sure some during the speed, the you droid spent race. One. The droid race. You spent okay, one. Okay. Th then yes. Okay. The, then I'm at six, but I did my math right. Okay. Don't make me go to your character sheet and constantly track them, you know, because like, you're supposed to be tracking this stuff. I'm, I'm usually good about it, Jeff, but it's been a while. Now, you're like the one character that has this big 7.5, don't get me started, of a four, dark side point pending. And these guys had dark side point pendings, and they've racked up a I couple. I don't have dark side points pending. Oh, I just have three dark That's side right. Points. I was going to say, the, the audience was asking me about this, and it was like, <laughs> do you have one more? It's like, oh, that's right, you know. I do. You I have do. three. Three. But I mean, I like, like I got a long way to go. Yeah, and Mer before I hit twelve, Merrick, we're at two. Take my character away from me. Yeah. Well, we are playing the Rebellion Era, and this specifically asks that you guys don't play either side, dark side, whatever. There is that that fear of when you get to your wisdom score, not the modifier, but the whole score. So you have eleven wisdom, you have eleven chances to be naughty. Not only do you can't use the system rules that this adventure asks you to look redeem these points; they're permanent. Um. It's getting like werewolf town. It is yoink. Thank you. You have a change of a lifestyle or perhaps, you know, you just play you right into the ground. If you can't beat him, join him. But it does give you that guy, that extra edge, you know, that extra special. Maybe we shouldn't be assholes. You know, maybe we should just, you know, let's not lay. And let's, it's, you know. it's a doubly uh, incentive for me because as soon as I gain one dark side point, I can't use like half of my force powers. That's right. Your vital healing. Because they're light side oh. So, with a shadow looming, at least a 75% shadow looming over Poser, if that is your real name. Um, For now it is. We'll have to uh, see. I think a lot of things are going to be revealed in this encounter where you two guys are side by side alone in the moonlight with a lovely winding path. Are you holding hands? Never mind. No. 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 Actually, um, an apology was made. I mean, the reason you were at Poser's room was because... <gasps> During that gladiator battle I mentioned earlier, and Poser was there, Darga stopped the fight with three Gomorian piggy blades about to come down. And he says, just say I win. Just say I win, uh, and I'll stop the fight. Uh, and you can, you know, just lose the wager to me. And Rahal picked the money over his companion. Sure did. And then Dr. Left promptly gave him trouble. And it was Sure did. And and old man Zinn doesn't like to see mom and dad slapping each other at the kitchen table in front of the kids, you know. So I believe he tried to make amends. And Poser hardly had time to process this betrayal confessed to him when the servant came down. So now there's this, I would like to think, an ominous, uncomfortable silence between the two of you. And now you enter the happy atrium, birdies flittering, moonlight. It's almost a romantical setting. With your perception of 14, it's still enough for you to notice that there is sort of a ledge that runs around all, sort of practically all the way around like a balcony, rather high up off the ground, poser. Okay. And Rahal, you notice once you guys, if I may be so bold, kind of take the proverbial step into the room. Yep. The audible beep that a blast door, like a, a Star Wars door makes when somebody is engaging it, but it's not opening behind you. It closes, it. it closes it, and then your panel on the side to open it goes from happy green, blue, lit, accessible, to duke, red, blocked out. Hmm. Well, this doesn't bode well. Round. All right, immediately, I'm going to ping with the force. Okay. Um, so Reaching out with the force. 
Yes. Roll it. So roll it. Use the force to, check. Yes. Uh, to sense my surroundings. Oh, okay. So you're not sensing for force users. You're sensing. You're basically you're allowed to use your force perception skill. Sorry, your force. Use the force skill instead of perception to reveal hidden o- objects. Getting all splinter yes. cell and doing that sonar ping kind of thing, right? Going, oh, I see. Yeah, you. Pr- pretty much. Um, okay. So as a swift action, make DC 15 use the force check mm-hmm. uh, to ignore effects of cover and concealment when making perception checks to detect or observe targets. Dude. Increase the DC by five. This ability is used against targets with total cover. I gotta Dude. Use 32. So, Isn't that juicy? Isn't that nice? Dude. I like it. I like it a lot. 18 on the die plus a 14 modifier, so. You use the force as good as I can lie. Hey, what? That's what I do. What? As good as he can lie. Hmm. And I could sell a bantha to a bantha herder. <laughs> and you could sell a bantha to a bantha herder. I feel herder. like that'd be pretty easy. Because you know bantha herders want bantha. No, they want to sell their banthas. Well, fresh uh, woolly mammoth meat does go pretty well in the market, I guess. Okay, okay. I could sell sand to the sand people. <laughs> See, that that's not as good as you can go. It's being s- able to sell sand to Anakin Skywalker. Because, you know, he hates it. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. Get, getting back sorry. to that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Let's I'm... keep coming. Uh, Attention. Matt actually killed his video. He doesn't want to be part of that joke. <laughs> um, no, actually, my camera just crapped out on me. Oh, okay. So uh, use the force of 32. Now, this is still a line of sight range, or what was the range on it? Nope. It, it's a there isn't four. a range on it. It is... Um, it's just to detect or observe targets, um, ignoring effects of cover and concealment. Hmm. Even if they have total cover, um, I beat the DC 20. So it's, I, I don't know how far we want to make the range. I mean, I would say just a, inside a room or just beyond a wall, you know, like the proverbial yeah. thermal signature going, there's somebody just outside that door, you know, that kind of, that, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it, Otherwise, there's the old six and twelve square kind of thing, but uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, we could treat it like detect magic, where it's like a certain amount of like sheet metal or like wood you can't really get past. Um. Well, if you can detect force user a mile away, <clears throat> well, I guess they are kind of a glow in the dark. Anyway, uh, no, I'm fine with this. So, you feel, you sense that there are living creatures in the room. Okay. You sense a presence something you've not felt since that street bike gang attacked you but it's faint more prominent in the room you sense four medium sized creatures they are all up in the trees scattered around the room Okay. Concealed um, in the upper trees. Which trees? One over here with this ping. One over here with this ping. One over here with this ping. And one over here with this ping. Two to your left ish. And one to your right ish. Why are you marking up my map? That's not only you sense this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I sense this, but I need to remember them because I don't have good memory, Jeff. Oh, okay. Well, we could move. <laughs> We might move, but okay. Last position known. Let's get yes. Let's, last position. Last position sent. You know, so shoot a tree. Who knows where we are? All right, <clears throat> poser. Round three. You come in. All this goes down. You get a bad feeling about this. You reach out with the force. It's lo- lovely that we're trying to do a video, guys, and you've all killed your cameras. <laughs> it's not my fault. My camera killed on me. Oh, okay. Um. So poser sensing, taking a moment. Uh, so that's an action, yeah? It's a swift action. Okay, so what do you want to do? Poser's your turn. So Merrick, I, will, I will quietly whisper over to Rahal. We got four tangos here. Two to the right, to the left, up in the trees. This is an ambush. 
And at that point, I will draw my blaster. And I will take a shot at the dude in the leftmost tree. Okay. So, southwest. Sure. Shoot away. Come on, big bunny. Uh, 16 to hit. Okay. We are, this is for us or the proverbial them flitting around. Even if we're expecting you, there is that technical um, first round surprise round. You know what I mean? If we're, yeah. if we're waiting on you, then it's kind of like, get them. But these creatures are just doing their thing, you know, just, just there. Yeah. I mean, this could be our home. This could be our cage. And you see us in a tree, just minding our own business. And you pull out your gun and shoot at us, you dark bastard. That sounds like a dark side point to me. I mean, you. I'm it's... sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Don't <laughs> give me that. Come, BS. come on, come on. They've have it attacked. I mean, there's there's some feelings. Oh, that's right. The biker swoop gang feeling that I just dropped on you, turning this to a yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine, fine. <clears throat> so nice to warn you. <laughs> I love the Sith, the Sith hum. Oh, you like that? I just don't have the music ready to cue. So, all right. Oh, it was good. It was good. Thank you. Getting out my, I got a, a new arrangement here with a new table, and I seem to have misplaced. Oh, there we go. Wonderful thing about an erase board is you can just jot down some hit points, and they can go away because ow, nine points of damage, uh, right? I get uh, you. And with that, I will. Use my move action and move behind this tree, taking cover. Okay. So you sense, Good. you speak, you shoot, and you move to cover. Yes. Awesome. All right. Now, just to try and keep everyone engaged here, Merrick, flipping back to the ship, as in classic Star Wars style of getting back to the, you know, to the who and whatnot. Merrick, are you still with us? Yes. Yes. Of course. Throwing the table, a little bit of a, a little bit of after results coming over. Uh, you know, Leth assures you he's fine, but uh, he needs to. He basically gets up and goes over to his computer, and uh, is telling. I have one question. I have one question. Sure. Can I do cool kick flip to put gun and back in hand? Uh, before you come over, yeah. No. Yes. Okay. I do such things. So you run back, get your gun, get Sasha, as you named your rifle. I see. Okay. He goes over and immediately starts trying to get, uh, checking his computer and whatnot, wondering if that blowout, that surge that lit the rooms, you know, hmm. ruined his precious data, ruined, you know, and is just snarky about it. Oh, you go see to that. I'm just going to uh, say so, um, my precious research. I, I'm I, I I'm assuming in like a hospital gown or I I don't have like oh you got your pants on he just he they just basically kind of ripped your shirt to the chest area cut up some sleeves maybe cut a bit of a pant leg so you're you know they took your boots off you're you look like the Hulk right oh, now. You, yeah. you got your pants on you're barefoot you know your stuff's I lying in a heap though but I I gave the fifty one percent it is my fault okay. Um, okay, I was to I want to grab my communicator. Okay. Right? Yep. And I w want to go over the path. Now I want to. Uh, huh. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I just want to do a general broadcast out to see who can respond. Okay. And uh, Ral, anybody who who is near, you get static. Like when you turn it on, the feed, the feedback is there and you quickly kind of fine tune whatever open channel you have just so it's not blaring at you and you try to broadcast. And when, as soon as you release, it's just static. Like there's an actual ambient hum, like a feedback loop coming right through your calm. Ask a left. Stay here. I will take care of this. Okay. Retrieving okay. your toys, taking a moment. We're going to say that's your round, just because time is precious, yep. you know? Yep. Okay. Re-gearing. Yep. Yep. While well, you grab your communicator and your gun. Yep. No armor, sorry. I don't use it in the first place, so okay. it works out. Zin. 
Old man's in. Paging's in. I'm here. Okay. Hello, hello. And Haas is in the room. All righty. You guys just, I believe you were just, uh, one of you guys had sort of like, I think Zinn was checking out the body and Haas had kind of like gone to the door. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I will continue to search a body. Um, really what I'm looking for is any kind of data sticks, things like that. Anything that would give me an idea as to why they're here. You know, because as far as I'm concerned, I think maybe the hut turned on us. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sore loser. Okay. So you take your round, you search, you search in the body. Can I have a perception check and I will move forward in time? Absolutely. Okay. Um, now I'm using an old, I'm using an old, um, an old tab here. Zeta being, we'll say the Corins and RX being somebody else that's on hand. So now it's, if there, if, if there are any Corins left, one is, you know, bleeding out in front of you. One is smashed in the med bay if there are any other lurking about they are doing their thing now but unfortunately if they are present they are not perceived by anyone on the ship at this time okay however next we have a combatant which i'm going to place right here that is guarding the walkway on and the ramp up to the cockpit so you guys can't take off, take off and get controls and you know vent places and whatever okay Haas. Yes. Not your go. But no, the last time last time around we had the proverbial, you know, like you kind of peek around. <clears throat> okay. Okay. And sure enough, you see standing in the dark, because I believe you have the cyber eye, you have some kind of dark vision going on with your guy. Uh no, it's just an enhancement for targeting. Oh, okay. So you need light. Yeah. Um, do you have the pack flares in your gear? Have you got? Uh, there's also possibly you could search the room for something like that to like you know like a emergency flare or something like emergency lighting, something portable. Yeah, uh, look for the zippo. No, I I don't have one. No, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Do you want to search the room for one? Sure. Or do you want to just creep out into the dark, going, "Well, they can't see me. I can't see them. Hopefully, you know that kind of thing." Uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. I'll I'll give you this. Since it's my go and I do something, you hear a strange, low, but intelligent growl of displeasure coming from down the hallway. Sort of a... Fair enough. And I do. Man, I, do I do my... It's... <laughs> You only, you only get twice without doing that third time. Um, Dr. Leff is banging away on his keys. Merrick and, you know, is absorbed in doing what I think I believe he'd be doing. Next we have, or should say last, um, we have Rahal. So this is, I've never actually had to do a double combat. This is kind of neat. Splitting the party is fun. Um, you know what though? I'm going to, I'm going to just take players to, just so you guys can see this. I realize huh. that by putting everybody on whatever map, like you have no idea what seeing. So I'm going to start shifting the party flag around so that everybody can, um, see what's going on. Yeah. It, it is neat that I can, um, separate the players. Oh, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> It's like now I have to drag you guys personally. It's like, there, isn't there any way to get? Ah, don't worry about it. We'll rely on your expertise in uh, explaining things. Yeah, quick, quick, yeah. quicky, flippy, flippy. Anyway, everyone can see the atrium now. Yep. Awesome. So Rahal. Yes. Poser warns you of imposing something. You know, you kind of oh, someone did lock the door behind us. Whatever. He doesn't. He doesn't give you the stage line bad feeling or whatever. Um, mumble something about little boys in sand and selling them some. And runs, takes a shot into the trees, and you hear a Gah! 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 Do you mind? You know, <laughs> and he runs over to a tree on the left. We're standing in a thing, it's like uh, three, four, five, six, about 12, 12 to 15 squares deep, and at least that wide. 
uh, it's pretty much rectangular, though the back wall does cut off. The angles are cut off on a 45, pretty heavy. The back wall's a little bit more okay. rounded. And you are aware that there is sort of a catwalk fairly high up the ground. Uh, can I have... And it's there's moonlight, but it's really kind of blocked out by the trees or whatever. But there is that sort of an ambulance squint in the forest party, field party kind of... You know what I'm saying? Like, you can kind of see yep. you move around. If you move cautiously, you're not going to fall over anything. But good luck trying to see stuff. But you do hear, you know, besides the... And... Poor thing. I know. Eh? Um, <laughs> Jeez, well, shit, I'm I it. will. I will uh, follow the cue. I'll. I'll move to cover and draw my weapon on the on route. Okay. Moves to cover. Draws weapon. Star Wars Saga 101, as we learned earlier on <laughs> in the season. It's like, yeah. But I gotta say, Poser's owning this. Like he just casually senses, swifts, acts, talks to you, takes the shot, and saunters to the tree unscathed because that's what you get to do when you have like the beginning of initiative with a 28 <laughs> with style but it's in the dark so not even you see it but anyway Rahal yes no one's there to see the okay drawing weapon yep. do I see the target okay can I have uh, perception we've been bouncing around three different systems Pathfinder 1 Pathfinder 2E and now back to this it's like perceptions are free I believe you don't have to like call it out 15 you hear movement in an adjacent tree, trees over here. Like there's something shifting around that's kind of bulky in this area. I'll shoot blind. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Damn straight. All right. Uh, two trees. Give me odd or even. Uh, even. Okay. It this, your perception with that with a fifteen does let you go. It's like up in the tree. Something bulky should a be about of ten. Okay, so yeah, you know, nail the side of the tree. Close, so close. Round four, poser, you're up. Merrick, you're on deck. But oh, before I get to round four, sorry, I do have some bad guys. So there's the reactionary ouch from something. And then it reveals itself. This thing jumps out of the tree poser and flies at you. Like, f like flies overhead and lands on the tree, like your tree. Oh. This okay. large black bird has a smooth sloping head and reflective eyes. Its black feathered body looming large in the darkness. Razor sharp talons cap the end of its claws. And the creature's massive wingspan makes it seem nearly the size of a small human. And it comes like, it looks like it's coming at the tree. And then it folds its wings and just comes right down on you. Okay. Whoosh. A swoop. <laughs> moves in the same round it attacks it gains a bonus to damage so basically i'm doing the dive bomb falcon yeah, dive yeah. you know whoosh um is there a knowledge roll to know what this is sure galactic lore bit of a penalty in the dark but i guess you've kind of perceived things with the force so you're good as if it was on par uh 18 this might be a Cree hawk uh, from the Nemodian world. Okay. Um, think of it like a really smart dog, or having a pet tiger with wings. Like you know what I mean. Like it's 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 a pet a, tiger with wings. It's an well, you have okay. you have like a guard dog, but it's it's domesticated. Then you have like a wolf, a bit of a predator. Then you have like a predatory cat or a predatory bird with a much sharper killer instinct, like a trained falcon. Only it's as big as you. And with the bigger bird brain comes, you know, a little bit more intelligence than your regular hooded falcon kind of thing. Native to Nemoidian and, you know, could be trained to attack for sport, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, what you do know is you are fighting a beast, not a person. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you shot first, you're in its home. They are territorial. And they will probably rip you to pieces until you leave or you're dead. And somebody locked you in a room with them. So it's like you basically got locked in a room with a tiger and it's hungry. 
You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, yeah. but this is how you need to think. It's like, this thing is smarter than the average bear, but it's not like you can go, oh, I'm sorry, I shot you. Yeah, you know. it, it ain't going to be taking us out to a picnic anytime soon. Yeah, and it's not going to like get chatty with you. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, so getting back to my swoop attack. Swoop, swoop. Talons coming in. Pulling up my Star Wars dice. Three. <laughs> Plus five, yeah, eight. So this thing, it goes over, and then there's that last second, the branches rustle, almost like a breaking from high up to lower as it dives on you, yeah. kind of like jumps back out. You're like, oh, dodge. And that's me. But there's more of them. These things start flying around. Two take flight in the air to try and get bearings, and the one that basically shot at the tree you did hit the right tree just you didn't hit me it does the same thing flies wide in an arc over the balcony comes behind rahal and gives him the old swoop dive talon rake natural 20 Ooh. which i believe is automatic double damage yep free crit now i am a talon creature it's a d4 i'm a medium-sized talon creature with strength it's a d4 plus four Using my special swoop attack, I add an additional 2d4 bonus. So Ooh. now I went from 3d4 plus 4 to 6d4 plus 8? Wait, would that swoop damage be somewhat similar to like sneak attack damage where you don't multiply it? It, sa no, no, it no, says, I, I whenever an Emodian Kreehawk moves in the same round that it attacks, it gains a plus, t plus 2d4 bonus to damage. Okay. It's just as flat. But we double it though. Right. We don't we don't roll extra dice. We just double it. I remember oh, that. Right. I remember right. from start. So anyway, I'm gonna roll these on screen because I don't want to hear the boohooing that I killed him, maybe. Kill me. You get that points ready there, right, Aiden? What? You get the points to save your life, right? Uh it's on Rahal, not me. I think. Eleven points. Mm -hmm. Twenty two points, Rahal. Comes nothing. I'm good. Rippity rip. <laughs> Yeah, your fourth level, you're fine. It's nothing. It's only two thirds of my health. That hit my threshold, though. Oh, <laughs> so now you got to make the the fort. Oh no, you come. You, no, you come down a condition on the track. I come down on one step on the condition. So now track. you're negative one to everything. Yeah, just a flesh wound. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Please note, and the other two are circling, looking for opportunity. That's the end of round three. Beginning of round four. Poser, you are up. Merrick, you're on deck. All right. So, is there one like, horrible yelp like, from like, Rahal? <laughs> My suit. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Not the denim. Yeah, put nice talons, pinstripes in your suit. So, Jeff, is there one right next to me, or did he retreat afterwards? Um. I don't think there's like a flyby. I have got dodge, mobility, and running attack as feats. Uh, does running attack count as like a flyby? Like, is this a, a move in? And because I've got um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna quickly look here. Um, I I think he's still close. Like, I had to pretty much get to you yeah like yeah. i have an eight okay. i have an eight square fly speed right and there's no diagonal yeah. in this game so if i'm in this tree here and then you're you know i'm like one two three four yeah. i'm above you i come down to a six i'm kind of flying away like i'm swooping out so i'm within two squares so you, okay. you could move up and Would strike I or you could just shoot him okay so i wouldn't provoke if i took a rain shot no, no, I'm I'm kind of doing the fly. You know, that's to my advantage. So okay, got it. I don't think pistols provoke, anyways. I don't think so either. But I, really I think I think pist I think pistols do not provoke attacks of opportunity. Rifles do. Okay. You are correct, sir. All right, then I. <laughs> Joe, am... could you look up those feats for me so I become the better component? <laughs> We've been spending um, so much time in Pathfinder. How long has it been we're in Star Wars? All right. I am going to instead of aiming at the one that just flew by me, I'm going to aim at the one. Attack and Rahal. And take a shot. Attack and Rahal. The, the one that is attacking Rahal. Okay. I got an eight. Sorry, no. Because I take penalties using all weapons. Ow. 
<laughs> there's not much I can do here. Yeah. Oh, there's lots you can do. There's Here's lots the you can do, but you have to, re- <laughs> <laughs> to reveal yourself, you know. Pull out it's your weird. master's crystal out of your guitar and chuck it at them. <laughs> I, I have no clue what you're talking about, Jeff. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm trying to get an audience caught up because they're like, where's this eye chamber? Well, <laughs> funny thing happened on the way to season one. Um, yeah. Poser, what do you got? He's measuring. Right, so He's shooting. I got, He's eight. I got eight. <laughs> yep. I missed. And? Hard. And? Um, and? You're going to move in your vu or are you going to? I'm going to use a swift action. Okay. Um, and give out a um, a loud yell. Oh dear. And use a force point as well on this. Um, but first, I'll do a use the force check. Okay, so I got a thirty-two. Okay. And you want to do what? I am burning a force point as well um, on Inspire, which is I can spend a force point to grant each target 2d6 bonus hits points when the power is first activated. Okay, but didn't you just so, shoot? That's your action? Yes, but Inspire is a swift action, force power to use. Oh, sorry. Right, right. Okay, gotcha. Yes. I saw the use so, force roll and I forgot. Right, okay. Yeah, so he also has a... Since I got a 32 on my use of force check, he also has a plus 10 to his will defense against mind affecting and fear affecting effects until the end of my next. Turn. Okay. So what what do you say? Do you did you just like use the force to silently inspire him with balls, or do you say something? Is like a bardic, you know? Just ah, oh, these stupid birds. Would you like to share possibly some of your galactic lore? Because like Matt can't meta, like you know what these things are. You might want to do some sharing. Sharing is caring. But like, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. Yes, I, 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 instead of bird, I will use the name, which I, as a player, have already forgotten. Uh, Creehawk. <laughs> oh, these freaking Creehawks. Uh, Creehawk. <laughs> is that uh, Looney Tunes with uh, the little tiny um, chicken hawk? I'm a chicken hawk. You know, a little dude. And the Longhorn was always like pulling the wool over his eyes. I, I, I say, I, 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 I say, boy, you got to keep your eye on the ball. Your eye, you get it? Eyeball. I made a joke. All right. So we each have. <laughs> the poser apparently is I'm ignoring. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where'd you go? Sorry, poser. Supposed to laugh, son. <laughs> Supposed to laugh. It's funny. We, we both get seven temporary hit points. Oh, cool. Take them. I will take them. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Nicely done. That's my man. So, right. so, so you inspire, you give a huge bonus to will defense for how long? Uh, until the next end of my next turn, or I can maintain inspire from round to round, similar to Bardic Performance. Okay. Um, it's a swift action, and I must make a new use of force check. Got if it. I take damage, I have to succeed. Okay. And you're done? Yep, that's... All I can do. Let's all head back to Merrick. Meanwhile, back on the ship, you get that Let's transition. Let's go back to the Merrick. Yeah. Let's go back to the Merrick. Uh, clothing montage later. Oh, that would be like the end of the battle. <laughs> the Rambo scene. The combat's going to be done, man. Come on. We're in seconds round. What do you do? Well, it's so epic. You, ha- you have your gun. You have your calm. It's staticky. What do you do? Time's of the essence. Who knows if your friends are safe? How about a knowledge tactics? I'm actually going to ask Ryan for a knowledge tactics role. Yeah. No. He tries to use his no. knowledge for everything. I want a knowledge tactics role. You have one. I have one knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it finally comes into play. Let's go. You're not a cavalier. Right. I, you've caught me off guard. Wait a minute. No, what ser- is this? Seriously? Oh, a knowledge tactics? A knowledge tactics. I will. Here we go. It has been sent to the gods. Ooh. What'd you get? I've got I got a twenty-four knowledge tactics. Twenty-four. This is not an isolated incident. One screwball sneaks into the lab and does tries to what? Steal corporate espionage? Less stuff that you think might be valuable. He says it is. Um, takes a t- shot at you. Is this is this that type of thing? No. 
if they're jamming comms, then they are, these guys are either a distraction so they can get what they want, or this is a straight out assassination attempt. The Quarren quote unquote assassinate your feet tips you off to that as well. But if they're still jamming, he's not the only one. And you got to find the jamming source to stop the comm so you can at least alert everybody. And there may be multiple, this might be a multiple takedown. You know what I'm saying? Like Korans do, can I have a galactic lore? Yeah, um, I you, I will attempt one. Uh, the results may vary. Um, do I think that their jamming would actually uh, jam the hardwired comm system on the ship? No, you could use an intercom. Okay. Uh, galactic lore, you said? But apparently there's been some kind of blowout failure. Like I said, all the lights came on, big and left is bitching, trying to restore power. Like there's something gone, like malfunction as in poof on the ship. Massive wide Galactic circle breaker, you know. Galactic lore, Galactic lore 14. Yeah, these buggers, like, um, they're stealthy and one man could go for one target. But if there's a crew on a ship and they know it, they will send more than one guy. It's probably mm -hmm. multiple bogeys. And if you can't reach your uh, comrades, you have no idea what's wrong. And that okay. is the end of the tactical knowledge I'm willing to impart. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, ask Leth, try to heal their comrades. Let them know that we have destroyed one of the opposition. I will go and find more. I have to restore power first. He sneers at you. Well, and he's playing. He's actually on one knee, digging under the table, and he's trying to like check breakers or whatever. Something's blown out the power, and he's digging around. Maybe he's got a battery or something. He can, you know what I mean, but. You are a good doctor. I have faith. Okay. So, and I wish to move. Okay, go ahead. Out. So it's uh, diagonals. We, we I think the, I think, no diagonals. No, yeah, free no diagonals. No diagonals. Okay. So. Oh, wait a minute. Did we actually find some? I, no, I think there are diagonal movement in Star Wars. Uh, Doug pulled that up on me. He showed me the literature for it. It would only gain me one extra. So. Um, okay. Until until reserved, I'll stick with what uh, where I am. It only moved me one square further. Yeah, it was no. I'm pretty sure we looked into it. It was cardinal directions only. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> I have made my move. I've done my free by talking with uh, mm -hmm. the good doctor. You want to do a double move or? Um. Well, I see nothing in the my immediate vicinity. Uh, per my per perception. Yeah. I don't think we count doors on your own ship as movement. If it was like a if it was a foreign door that you don't know, I might cost you movement. But since this is your ship now, you just kind of like slide through. Mm -hmm. Fair. Uh, Twenty, not natural for perception. Okay, you hear sense. You just get a feeling that there might be someone on the other side of the actual engine. You know what I mean? Mm. You hear. You ever, you ever have a dish settle in a kitchen or something? It's like, you know, it's a noise of machinery or whatever, but it could be a cat. It could be, you know what I mean? There's just that kind of rattle right. or something like some, maybe somebody's pulled that chair back or brushed it or whatever, but it's like, hmm. And the the number 23, that like the uh, big thing in between us here, that is like solid from floor to ceiling. Yeah, yep, that, that's, that's the reactor. That's like the main reactor engine stuff. Okay. I wish to pile up on this um, Warner, yep. You see our, yep. He yeah, head, head south and peek around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that I assume is the uh, abundance of my actions I am allowed. Yes, but I will tell you that in the dark, do you have any special vision? No, I do not. Okay. Um, with sort of a like a power wide down. Okay. There is, however, it's not like the reactor's blown out. The reactor seems to have power. It's still, you know, in its lukewarm thrum or, you know, whatever was going on. Like, we were powered down for the night, but it has indicating lights on it that it is it is willing to give power. So there wasn't a reactor malfunction. Something's going on with the ship's circuits or something blew out like a bypass. You know what I'm saying? Like that big light going, something surged and it wasn't the reactor. Okay. Or somebody okay. made the reactor surge and the wiring couldn't handle it. And the reactor's fine, but the wiring all through the ship like blew out lights in the whole bit. And it's like, hmm. Anyway, two things. The reactor shouldn't be on, and it is. And second, it's enough ambient light from glowing stuff that if you hug here, 
and you know peek around if there's somebody like right there within these line of sight squares you should be able to get a sense for them and you do not okay so i'm not saying 15 is clear but 16 18 you know that kind of thing yeah cool zinn and haas zinn wanted to pat down the guy and that's, Frank, I'm going to say that's going to take, you know, a couple of rounds. You're searching for answers. So we'll skip the Haas. Okay, fair enough then. I will take a knee. Okay. I think I actually owe you a turn too. That's all right. <laughs> you, you waited to see if Frank found anything? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> no, that's all good. Uh, no, I was just uh, take a knee mm -hmm. uh, and pull out my weapon. Okay. And peer out the door. Okay. Down now you you heard something, a couple squares yep. away, and hopefully it can't see you. But if it can, do you have anything you could give it? Do you have any? You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of like the periscope of speaking around the corner, he just extends his hand and gives it the finger in, in the dark. Wait, see if he shoots. Get a perception check for the opposition. Yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah, just and then I'll just you know take take a quick little peek. What do I see? Okay. Besides besides darkness. Um do you have any accelerated or enhanced senses being a cyborg? No, nah, nope. Like you have optical targeting, which gives you a HUD display, and that's neat, but you don't have any enhanced hearing, you don't have any enhanced smell, you don't have any nope. Nope. Okay. Nope, just other storage areas you see the darkness yeah i knew this was coming from matt <laughs> do i mute up matt as well as keep the video <laughs> I, I swear dude this <laughs> every time no matter what game we're playing it's, i'm sorry but it was one of the best little hidden videos in any video game it, i've ever played it's true it's classic it's classic it is true all right anyway <clears throat> if the peanut gallery's done you do see pretty much nothing but darkness. Now I got that video playing in my head. I know it's so good. Um, anyway, you peek around the corner. You have yep. you have your proverbial full color of plus ten that this affords. You know, um, there is auxiliary lighting comes on in an emergency. Like it's, I don't think they would be blown out because of the actual, like there's the main lighting coming on. Okay. Okay. So it should be on, but it's not like something surged, like practically a large portion of the ship. And it seemed to be geared to lighting because you can see the ladder that goes up into the cockpit and the very mm -hmm. top of the ladder is lit by panels and things there's a tiny bit of ambient light spilling out and at the bottom of the ladder peering around there's you can't tell quite what it is but it is large it's taller I than shoot. a man okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> has, has a lot of concealment and you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it i'll take a shot sure Open is American. No, I love how he didn't wait for the. Sorry. <laughs> I'm glad he didn't wait for the description. He just peers around and <laughs> There's something there. And shoot. I'm trying to. They won't let me roll. I have a new. Oh, check behind your character sheet. There may be a dialogue screen that comes up that asks you to do confirmation. Uh, modifiers. Kind of mod. Yeah. All right. Uh, Eighteen. Oh. Oh. What do we got here? Make me look up. Ooh, okay. So anyway, you shoot. And like I said, at the last second, he just, this thing sort of shifts and just kind of lurches forward. And it's so close and it sparks right off the ladder. And he, you just kind of hear a large form kind of glomp away, uh, headed this way, like around the corner towards the loading ramp. You just okay. missed so close. Would you like to burn a force point? Do uh, it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Sure, why not? I only have a few. Why not? D6. Yeah, I'm just hoping. You only need it, to save it's been, one. It's been, it's been a while since I've used this system, so. Oh, yeah. Trying to remember where everything is. Yeah. 
Dun, 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 dun. Just give me one second. Four. Ooh. Four. 18 <laughs> and four 22. is 22. <clears throat> my, uh-huh. my, defense, my defense is really high, but a 22 does hit it. So it still hits that. Awesome. It still hits that um, rung, right? Mm-hmm. But it got the back of his shoulders and head, and there's that burnt singe fur smell suddenly permeates the air, and you kind of hear like a grunting. <laughs> 14 points of damage. Oh, I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have my full attention now. Ah. Take that! <laughs> you have my full attention now. And now it's the bad guy's turn. Oops. Um, Merrick. Yes? Hugging the other side like you, waiting for its moment, and it's its go, and it suddenly just sort of, um, like an arm comes flying out your way, and something comes skittering across the floor, kind of hits the back wall here, and it goes bloop, bloop, on the floor. And something metallic. This way comes. This way comes. Bounces off a wall. There's like a ping and clutters on the floor fairly close to you. Not close enough that you can see it clearly from the ambient light, but close enough that you could hear it. And that's it. And now it's Mr. Grumbly's turn. And Mr. Grumbly basically, you know, lurches forward, gets hit. A big weapon comes up and basically he just, you know, there's that shot, lurch forward. And then surprise, he just immediately leans back out as if you were, you know, hoping that you would like shoot, see him move and then like follow up. Ah, he's on the run kind of thing. There's that moment in time and then just two arms kind of hold the you know hold the bowcaster out with <laughs> straight along the wall at you and yes i did say bowcaster and yes i did say burnt fur so you know what that means it's going to die <laughs> <laughs> they hired chihuahuas to attack us yes it's edible fearsome fearsome what no <laughs> fearsome and edible chihuahuas ah oh, shoot 15. How much cover do you have? That's true. I <laughs> just shot in like aim. He just like steps back out and goes. Poof. Yeah, so add 10 to your reflex. You miss. You hit the wall. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Keeping you from coming after me. You know. But yeah, the big elongated, you know, bowl caster bolt goes down the hall. King. Like, yes, I see you. Oh, Joe, you got to flavor better. He's like, no, you miss yeah. and you shoot your mother. Anyway, <laughs> Dr. Leth. Yeah, I think this should at least add a little bit of floor lighting, some auxiliary power and whoop tiny little you know dotted strip lights like a light at your feet Haas kind of bleeding towards the room so someone could enter the room and not fall over the bunks one or two along the back wall under the cockpit like very small auxiliary lighting you know struggling to come on kind of lighting floors but now we can see dimensions of hall shadows you know we go from what the hell's going on to everybody has concealment and the fight continues, and we will see you. No, Rahal. Why end it here when we can end the round? Rahal, it's your go. Yes. Yes. I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the Avery. Back in the Avery. Okay, so now I can clearly see this creature that has attacked me. I uh, did a swoop in the night. Yeah, there's a big shadowy feathery form. 
you know, some glycerin. He says Creehawk in your knowledge galactic, please. Oh, good call. Well, that way it kind of your brain fills in what it thinks it should see. Yeah. What do I know? What do you know about Creehawks? Nothing. Harmless, Galactic harmless creatures, six. harmless creatures, vegetarians, but easily riled up by gunfire. You evil, evil pricks. Six. No such thing as a Creehawk. Yep. It's a guy in a bird Whatever. suit. It's a guy in a bird <laughs> suit <laughs> with hand-to-hand Nemoidian talon fighting. You know, posers. Ah, it's Condor Man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That screams out into the night, poser. Ah, it's Condor Man. What do you do, Condor Man? I mean, I will. I will take aim on the shadowy, feathery form and fire. Okay. I have concealment because of the darkness, but I'm like two squares away, so it's not, you know, pick a square, right? Come on. Big money. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Natural oh. one. There's no anti-crit in this. It's just, you know. No. Just, it, but no amount of force points with that natural one will save you. Nope. Not even a little bit. Yep. The dice are not kind to me All right. this evening. Our turn. Two are flying away from your position. An arc around and two, and they start calling to their brethren. He's here. He's here. Kaka. Condor man attack. You know, and the two, two <laughs> swoop in. <laughs> two swoop in. And we've got a ratty 12 for poser and another seven with is 12. So they come at you guys and you're, you know, you hear them coming. Woof, 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 woof. And the initial surprise attack of sweeping over and dropping, you guys are kind of quickly realizing how these things move. And even though these guys come in low and use the path, the trail, and then like bank, you know, as sort of the flying aviation formation and swipe at you guys, you manage to hug the tree and just kind of move around the bark enough to like, you know, a tree gets scathed instead of yourself. And Perfect. we will see you next time to start round five on we. Shot first. Say good night, everybody. Pew pew. Good night, everybody. Good night. Dog. Yow. <laughs>